Right now, we've got Ann McNamara standing by with the latest on what's happening. Ann? Yeah, we're just working out the details here with Officer Tanya Borman, Virginia Beach Police Department. Thank you for joining us. Could you kind of walk us through there, just walking through the timeline about uh, the two robberies? You're saying one was attempted and one was actually a robbery. Can you explain that? Well, my understanding was just after, at approximately 1030 this morning, we received a call for an attempted robbery at a pharmacy on Laskin Road. A short time during which there was possibly uh, shots fired. A short time later, we received a call that there was a robbery at another pharmacy near 17th and Atlantic. Uh, suspect information was developed and it was broadcast to our officers. One of our officers spotted the vehicle, attempted to stop the vehicle. The vehicle refused at that time. If I could interrupt you, do you know the exact path or about which roads the vehicle took to get where we are right now? My understanding it was down off 264 and then got on to from Lynn Haven on to Virginia Beach Boulevard, which came down Virginia Beach Boulevard towards Witch Duck Road. During that time frame when the vehicle officer was trying to stop the vehicle, uh, the, the person in the vehicle was actively shooting upon the officers. Was um, anyone hit by those shots? I don't have that information right now. Obviously, the scene is very large and it is, is, rel it is developing rapidly. Um, we did deploy our spike strips, which stopped the vehicle and it came to rest here. So obviously, we have a lot to do with this investigation right now. We do have three scenes. And, and we can see those spike strips, Aaron, if you can kind of point toward the middle of the intersection while we're still talking here with Officer Borman. Now, Officer, we also just saw, um, we're hearing from witnesses that the suspect vehicle is the uh, bluish purplish Honda CRV that you can see uh, just across the street here. Uh, is that the suspect vehicle? Are you able to say that at this point? I'm not going to confirm that right now. Um, obviously, I'm not going to confirm right at this moment. Okay, and then we also want to mention uh, there was a man we just saw on scene in our last live shot. You could see him being tended to uh, by paramedics and police. Uh, he had a bandage around his head, and we saw him transferred after we got off the air, transferred from uh, the police vehicle, the back of a police vehicle, to the ambulance. Are you able to comment if that was the suspect as witnesses say it was? Not at this time, no. And can you tell us about um, the challenge of this scene? Obviously, uh, you had the spike strips deployed, uh, then it becomes a crash. Is that red vehicle? Is that just a average person kind of driving around every day? Are you able to say that? Basically, you're seeing what I'm seeing. All of this is under investigation. We have a very large scene. This is a very large intersection. We have a lot of things to, to deal with right now. Um, evidence to, pervers, to preserve at the scene. So we're not, we're not speaking of the actual intricacies of the incident right now. And as you know right now, do you know if any police cruisers were involved in crashes as a result of this chase? That I do not know. And, and one last thing I wanted to talk to you about is uh, I was actually driving up the boulevard coming here and I saw officers going door to door businesses asking different questions, uh, possibly to see if any of the gunshots sort of landed in that area. Can you talk about the scope of this crime scene and the work you have to do here and, and what they do when they go door to door doing that? Well, obviously this is going to be very large. Our officers are going to go out to see if, one, to canvas to see if there's any witnesses to the incident. Two, if in fact, because, again, uh, rounds were fired towards our officers, we want to double check that no one else, any other victims, things of that magnitude. So, yes, one, we're canvassing to find out if there are any, uh, any witnesses to the incident. And two, if there's any other vehicle struck or any other, anybody else that might be injured because of this. And last question for you, are you able to tell us the name of the shooting victim at this point? Is that something you have to release? No, not at this time. Obviously, this is all within the last couple hours. We have a lot to do with this investigation to preserve it, to make sure the victim or whoever, proper justice there, as well as the investigation we need to, the integrity investigation, we're going to hold, uphold that. Would you say charges are pending? Is that safe to say? It's a good chance to say that, yes. Officer Borman, thank you for joining us today. Everybody else, again, we are at the intersection of Witch Duck Road and Virginia Beach Boulevard. You can see still a very active scene. They're working through the traffic issues, uh, so avoid this area if you need to today. Uh, but this is the scene from Witch Duck and Virginia Beach Boulevard. Back to you guys. And is uh, Officer Borman still close by? Can you ask she her about the policy for uh, pursuits through busy streets like this? This is a very heavily trafficked area. Uh, yes, I'm not. I'm, I'm not able to grab her just right now. But the, I think the, what the policy is, uh, is is the is the and pr for, if you can hear me, Officer Borman, if I speak out of turn. The policy when there's a chase on city streets is that the suspect is the the prime concern at that point. 
Um, she's asking about policy when there are chases on city streets. Anita, could you clarify the question? Oh, well, obviously, they don't want to endanger anyone else. So the suspect, of course, is who they're after. But there are a lot of people uh, in that area as there are shots being fired and several different police cars zooming through the area. So how do you make sure that other people in that area aren't getting hurt? OK, she's asking, is there a way to make sure, is there something you guys can even do to make sure other people are not getting hurt when you have uh, an unforeseen scene like this where someone is, is actively moving down a, a busy street, shooting shots out the window? Is there something you guys do to maybe corner off the area as best you can? We do. Have, we have additional officers we're sending ahead where we're trying to determine where the suspect may going, be going so we can block off those intersections, things of that nature. Obviously, a situation where an individual is firing at police officers they're severe. If it's going to be that large that they're going to do that to us, you know, we want to take that person off the street. We're going to do everything I can to take that individual off the street, but also render assistance in trying to make it safe for everybody else involved. So, yes, we'll block off roads ahead of it. That's the reason why we needed to get him stopped as quickly as we can. And important to point out that is how you stopped this vehicle. We used our, our spike strips, correct, our yep. stop strips. Out ahead of it, trying to block off the intersections best they can when they're responding to a scene like this, guys. All right, thank you. That's 